segment now for our newsmakers where we discuss what's behind the headlines. Dr. Rebecca Huntley is social researcher and director of the Ipsos McKay Report. And Kate Carnell is the former chief minister of the ACT and current CEO of the Australian Food and Grocery Council. Welcome to you both. Pastor Terry Jones in Gainesville, Florida, had vowed to mark Saturday's ninth anniversary of the September 11 attacks by burning Qurans. It was part of a protest against a proposed Islamic cultural center near Ground Zero in New York. Now, he's apparently changed his position several times, but let's listen to his first protest. We are wanting to send a message uh, to those people who do not mind threatening the president, who do not mind bombing buildings, uh, who do not mind storming embassies. We're sending a message to them that we can go beyond talk. If you, if you push us too far, uh, we, we can go beyond talk. There's a time that the talk is over. There's a time that we must stand up and uh, battle. That was Pastor Terry Jones there. That obviously gets quite strong reactions from a lot of people. Let's just step aside from what he's actually said first. In terms of the relations between Islam and the West, Rebecca Huntley, where are we? Well, I, w I can't comment on the US, but um, in Australia, I suppose there's, a, there's nowhere near that kind of level of behaviour, although there are still some sensitivities. And I think that um, what we don't have... Um, what I think we're lacking at the moment is some, some effective spokespeople to manage those difficult conversations. I think that we, from the, from the point of view of our research, people look at the Islamic community and sometimes say the only people we hear are religious leaders and then we have crazy religious leaders from overseas talking about it. So I think that we need more spokespeople managing what is a difficult conversation. Look, I agree with that. I was actually in America last week, so it was interesting to see a, a, a different point of view because the Islamic Centre in New York is actually a real issue in, in the US. Mm. People are talking about it. I wasn't in New York, mm. but I, I was in Denver, Colorado, some other places, and people were actually talking about it. They were concerned. So in America, it is a little bit of a different space. Mm. And it was great to hear the president come out and say, look, this is not a war against Islam. Mm. This is a war against, uh, against terrorists. Mm. Um, I wish we could hear that comment yeah. lots more often. And the other thing I loved was very early on, religious leaders, I think, got together in New York of all kinds of persuasions and kind of spoke out together. And so you had people, you had Christians, you had Jews, you had all kinds of people saying, this is not what America is about. So I thought that, was, that made me very pleased. But, you know, we're talking about this this madman, which is exactly what, exactly what he wants, and I think that his um, church congregation may, in fact, um, explode after this, regardless. Mm, indeed. I mean, it, not. I mean, that, that's a terrible <laughs> use of words. I've got to say, but. Yeah. In terms of what he's actually said, there's been a lot of criticism. I've been reading some of the blogs, looking yeah. at Twitter, and it says, why did the media give this guy so much fuel? Yeah. And we had a story earlier where there must have been about 100 satellite vans parked outside yeah. his church. I mean, you can't really ignore comments like that, can you? Look, it's really interesting. This is a, a guy, you know, he's, he's got a, apparently a bit of a failing church from what I've, yeah, I, yeah, I've yeah. read, who comes out and says something totally outrageous. Is it okay to have 100 satellite? Yeah. Is, but this guy has now got oxygen, there's no yeah. doubt. I actually think he's going to become a bit of a cult hero yeah. amongst some people, unfortunately, because yeah. there are people who are concerned in this space, mm. as we say, and possibly don't have the information back up mm. that, mm. that lots of us have. Mm. So he's going to be a cult hero and he's going to be a cult hero produced by the fact he's been given so much yeah. oxygen. Is that okay? Yeah, mm. I, and I think the only reason why um, people in Islamic countries will find out about that is not because they're on the net, it's because it's on CNN. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on from that. Stephanie Rice made a homophobic tweet, if we've been talking about Twitter this week. She lost a very lucrative sponsorship deal over it. No wonder she was crying when she said sorry. I owe it to those whom I have offended to publicly say I'm sorry. I also want to say it's just not me to give offence to other people, no matter who they are. I'm not a person who judges others or speaks in a way that hurts feelings of others. My comments were thoughtless and careless. But I can assure you, when I made those comments on Twitter, I never intended to offend anybody. No matter who people are, what they can or can't do, they are entitled to the dignity that we expect for ourselves. I broke basic rules of courtesy to others and consideration for others, and for that I am truly sorry. 
several issues there. Um, there's the social media issue yeah. and there's the homophobic comment mm. side of it. In terms of the homophobic comment, mm. would it be fair to say that probably too many people in this country feel it's okay in what they perceive as the privacy of their own homes or the privacy of email, if you can call it that, to make homophobic or racist comments. Well, look, when I saw that, I remembered a report that we did a couple of years ago on um, 13 and 14 year olds. And the thing that I noticed about the, their conversations was that if they had a mobile that they didn't like, they would say, oh, that mobile's gay. And obviously they didn't mean the mobile was homophobic, but it was used as an, all, an all-purpose phrase to describe something that you don't like. So they divorced the term from the meaning. Now, I think this is an important lesson, that actually, even though you might not intend, and I don't like that I didn't intend to hurt people, it was all about I. Stephanie Rice was like, I don't do this, I don't do that. I think it's a pretty important thing to close the gap between how we use these terms and what they actually mean. They actually relate to real people. So it's a hard lesson, but, you know... It's not the worst lesson in the world. She'll go on to still swim. She won't be driving a Jaguar that will be given to her, and I think it's a pretty fair result, I've got to say. Kay Carnell? I don't believe when she put those words on her tweet that mm. she was actually thinking about gay people at all. Yeah. I think she'd... We'd, Australia had just won a game. She was carried away. She was really yeah. excited and used some really inappropriate words that weren't associated yeah. with you know, um, um, homophobic sentiment at all. They were inappropriate words. But you know what it shows is people should put the tweet somewhere else. <laughs> you know, when they're excited or have had a yeah. couple of drinks, please get rid of the mobile phone. Yeah. Well, um, well, this is the thing, isn't it? It's, it's Twitter is, is, is no better ooh. than or no more or less mm. public, really, than mm. email. It's, it's probably mm. much more public yeah. than email. And yeah. when you think, you think about, you know, the pub or, what, you know, everyone's watching the soccer mm. or the footy at the pub, some pretty inappropriate things get said, but they yeah. don't get tweeted. No, that's exactly um, right. I'm not saying inappropriate is good, mm. but, you know, eh, people do that stuff. Mm. I just can't get my head around mm. why people like Stephanie, who are mm. going to be high profile, people mm. are going to read the tweets, that's why you send them, mm. um, you know, don't just put it aside. Yeah. Um, just don't do it. It shows lack of lack of judgment, um, lack of maturity. Let's move on. Taxing junk food. The idea has been around for quite a while, but a report this week from the University of Queensland and Deakin University concludes that a 10% junk food tax would be a cost-effective strategy to encourage consumers to eat healthier food. Well, Kate Carnell, what do you think of this <laughs> oh, one? It's, it's pretty obvious. I think, I think it's a really dumb idea. The reason is we've already got a 10% tax on processed food. It's called the GST. Now, um, remember the GST is on processed food and not on fresh food right now. When we implemented the GST, did it make a difference to the amount of chips and apples everybody ate? Did it make a difference to, to obesity? No. Obesity levels have gone up ever since that. If we're looking at the 10% as a tax, just a straight tax, a way of ra raising revenue that might be able to be spent in the health space, that's a different debate than a debate to say that a 10% tax will stop or reduce obesity levels, will change the way people eat. The problem we've got is this is really regressive because you know, people on lower incomes spend a bigger percentage of their, of, of their income on, on food, so putting an extra 10% on a chunk of their food will affect them significantly more than people on higher incomes. It's regressive and there's no indication that it'd work at all. But do we need the state to intervene to tell us what we should be eating if we're going to have this obesity well, epidemic? I suppose, I mean, I, I take, first of all, I look at this and think how there's going to be a field day in terms of defining what junk food is. Oh, yeah. I think there is something to be said for the burden on the state in terms of, of health, health costs. costs that people buy. But my view generally is before you start having punitive measures, you have to start thinking about what else can we possibly do. Education's it, part of it. I think things like um, programs in schools. So are there some positive things that we can do rather than simply looking at a tax? But this isn't new. These yeah. programs yeah. have been going on for some yeah. year, years, but still the solution doesn't see, it seems to evade us. Because well, the reason for obesity is are, are so complex. It's not simply that people go to McDonald's every now and then, or people don't do some exercise. Um, I think that I think that the the the. The attraction of a tax is it seems like a really a, a simple problem for a difficult for a difficult issue, and I just don't know if it's going to work. I don't think it should be 
um, dismissed out of hand and it could be part of a raft of other stuff but I don't know if we've looked at the other stuff better before we've thought about this. Remember a number of, new, of, of US states have a soft drink tax now. They raise a lot of money. Has their levels of obesity gone down? Are US people mm. in those states less obese than other mm. states? Absolutely not. It raises quite a lot of money mm. for, for some of those states. Mm. So this is a tax. It's not about obesity uh, at all because as Rebecca said this is really complicated. If, um, if your brand of, of potato chips goes up by 10%, does it mean you don't buy it or does it mean you just buy a cheaper brand of, of chips? Mm. I don't think it means you buy an apple. Okay. <laughs> now, very quickly, I yeah. just want to ask you, and I need really quick answers yeah. from both of you. Julia Gillard, government, is it going to last? Rebecca? Well, I've, the thing that's frustrated me this, this week is that we've got one side saying this is going to be fantastic government, the other side saying it's going to be fragile. I don't think we really know. I don't think anybody knows until we give it a go. Um, I, and so I'm actually gonna, not going to say anything until I see what actually <laughs> happens, you know, because it is, a, it is a relatively new landscape, so I don't want to judge it before I can actually see whether it's going to work. And, Kate, you've had some experience with this. <laughs> um, yes. Um, I reckon minority governments can work. I, had, I ran two of them myself. All I know is that Julia Gillard is going to age significantly oh. <laughs> because it is really hard work. No longer is it just about caucus or just about the Greens, it's about Rob Oakeshott, it's about Windsor, it's about, you know, it's one by one. She's got to live in stylist. <laughs> so even though she's going to look older, she's going to still look good. OK, <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a great discussion. Thanks so much for joining us, Thank Rebecca you. Huntley and Kate Carnell. Lovely to see you both. Thank you.